What is going on, gunfighters? If you are listening to this, then you're probably a regular listener who has tuned in to the other episodes of Modern Gunfighting Technique. I should say that episodes 1 through 4 were scheduled and put out on Patreon way, way before this episode and commercial free. So if you want to get all the episodes commercial free, that's just a small bite-sized amount of the content that's on Patreon. To all the patrons, thank you. To all those that want to become a patron, mostly because you want to support the podcast. American, veteran-owned, small business should be a patreon link in the show notes with that because i think it's germane to why you should listen to what i say when i'm talking about modern gun fighting techniques i'll put in a version of the bio and then we'll get cracking on today's episode the draw and ready positions getting the gun into action i'll roll into a quick abbreviated bio and then into the main topic first and foremost i'm a christian i don't apologize for that god is number one in my life I grew up hunting and fishing in the backwoods of the southeastern United States at a very early age. Some of my earliest memories are with firearms. I joined the Marine Corps at 17, did a couple of combat tours in Iraq. By God's grace, he got me through that safely. After that, I served as a instructor, an urban warfare instructor and a desert warfare instructor for the United States Marine Corps. I also served with the LAPD, both full-time as a sworn police officer, and some more specialized assignments, as well as serving in the U.S. Army, full-time and part-time National Guard. I've been a FBI firearms instructor, still am an FBI firearms instructor, have been for a lot of years, also NRA certified and some other three-letter government agency certified. I've been a private contractor for a three-letter government agency I won't specify, I've been the commander of a tactical team in a large metropolitan area. By God's grace, he got me through all that in one piece, not because I'm better, but because he chose to have grace and mercy on me. I've been a professional hunter and guide. Professionally hunted things like buffalo and elk. Not many people today can say they've done that, but I'm blessed to be able to say that I have. I've hunted everything from white-tailed deer on the east coast to mule deer on the west coast to Gray squirrel on the east coast, a prairie dog on the west coast, and elk and bear and wolf and slain all manner of beast. A state rifle and pistol champion a few times over in a few different disciplines. Now those experiences, it's not because I'm bigger or badder, certainly not bigger. In fact, I met one of the patrons in real life and uh, he said something to the effect of, I thought you'd be bigger. Reminded me of that William Wallace movie. Where he's like, oh yeah, if William Wallace were here, he'd shoot lightning bolts out of his rear end. Well, I'm not William Wallace, but I am the person that did all those things in the bio. But not because I'm bigger or badder. I don't think that I survived when many other young, good men did not. I give all the glory and all the credit to God. All the talents and experiences that he's given me and the things he's let me live through. I hope to use them. To glorify God and to help you today. So I, so if I boast in anything, it's not in my strength. It's in that God had mercy on me and saved me because he had a purpose for me. And hopefully I can use those talent, skills, and abilities to serve you today. Alright, man, are you ready for another installment of Gunfighter Life? Where we talk about guns, gunfighting tactics, techniques the right way with Almighty God at the center. Judeo-Christian values and real world first-hand experience. Now, all the great techniques and fundamentals of marksmanship, you could have the best trigger control in the world. You could have the best stance in the world, the best grip in the world, but if somebody shoots you in the face before you're able to get into that fighting position, before you're able to introduce a gun in a usable position in that scenario... Game over, man. You have the best offhand shooting technique. You could scratch it. You could have the best multi-thousand dollar uber long range. A BC that makes a 6.5 Creedmoor drool on a super awesome 
carbon fiber bi no strike that tripod with a the best point zero 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 one MOA rifle and if it takes you a half an hour to get into a good shooting position and that elk walks out into a clearing and then walks away and is gone none of that stuff really matters right you got to get your gun into action in a timely manner that's what we're talking about today we're mostly going to talk about the draw because the primary audience of this is Americans that carry guns on their hips I hope like a man let he who has no sword sell his cloak and buy one. I'm not saying you can't be a man without carrying a gun, but I'm saying if you're listening to this, you're probably the kind of man that carries a gun. How does one get that gun from where it is to where it needs to be? Well, I've talked about this, and I'm not going to go into different carry positions. I did a whole episode on an appendix or a pen don't. Uh, it should be out before this episode, at least in the schedule for the regular audience. But uh, here's the thing. I'm going to advocate strong side hip. Strong side hip. If you look at throughout history, there are exceptions like the bollocks dagger and things like that. But most of the time, most people's go-to fighting implement was carried on their hip. I'm going to encourage you to carry it on your hip. Also, if you look at continuity of training, if you're a professional gunfighter, you're probably carrying the gun somewhere around your strong side hip. That's the best place to carry. Anything else from that is, I would say, handicapping yourself. You can disagree with that if you want, and that's fine. Most of the techniques will still apply, and most of the principles will still apply. Now, I often talk about my accuracy standard for a handgun generally unless I'm working on a specific skill that day and I'm press for time I generally like standing offhand which doesn't mean with my weak hand it means standing unsupported I like 10 shots and what I call my head plate my head size steel target 50 yards 10 in a row before I let myself do anything else used to be more but it just took up too much time but that's generally the go-to standard for accuracy and I've talked about that before not saying that has to be yours but you should have a good standard my general go-to for speed is double arms distance, what I would consider normal gun fighting distance if I'm going to a, an extended draw. My standard is .8s. I like .7s and I'll try for .6s from the draw to hits on target, hits on target in that amount of time. Again, that doesn't have to apply to you, but you should have some kind of standard for speed. And some people think, if I want to go faster, I'm just going to keep doing what I'm doing and move faster. I'm going to tell you the primary way that you should get a fast draw is by doing less. The best way and the most consistent way to get fast hits on target from getting your gun to where it is to where it needs to be is doing less. Economy of motion is probably a more eloquent way to put that. Economy of motion. Wasted Motion equals wasted time. It also introduces more inconsistency, more chances for you to mess up. You need to get that gun out, oriented towards a target. They were talking modern gunfighting. In certain situations, you might have to fire before you get a proper sight picture. And I don't consider that breaking a safety rule, because if the dude is pressed up against my muzzle, are my sights on target? Yep. Check that box. Pull the trigger. But you want to practice getting your gun out, getting that muzzle oriented towards the target, picking up those sights. We talked about what your eyes are doing. But you're, you find the target and then you're looking for that gun and you're introducing that gun into the equation. You're picking up those sights. You want to do that with a good economy of motion. And you want to start pressing that trigger when your sights are on target. And you want to know what the acceptable sight picture is while you're squeezing that trigger. But let's go back to economy of motion. Number one, for the draw, you need to establish, well, one, you need to have it in, in, a, in a good place, your gun, and you need to make sure it doesn't move around because how can you be consistent if your gun's always in the wrong place? You're always carrying a different gun or you're carrying in a different place. Um, but get your firing grip on that gun. Get a full firing grip on that gun in the holster. That is your goal. 
that is your goal it doesn't always happen but that's the goal to establish a firm firing grip of your gun in that holster before you get it out of the holster that's the safest place to establish your firing grip you have the most control there once that gun's out of the holster you can still change your grip if you need to but you have less control over it after it's out of the holster ideally you want to establish a full firing grip on that gun in the holster and a good way to do this is to work in reverse when you're out doing your accuracy standard you get a really really good shot like you're you had that and you're like oh that was a really really good shot now you want to follow through you want to bring that gun in the most direct path keeping the muzzle oriented towards your target as long as you can and then rotating it down into the holster economy of motion finger off the trigger because your sights are off the target right then you're gonna put it down in the holster and you're going to remember you're going to recognize and remember what that full firing grip feels like when your hand is on the gun and that is what you strive for when you're grabbing that gun a full firing grip on the gun now your non-firing hand your support hand your non-dominant hand your weak hand whatever you want to call it I, there's all kinds of schools like it's not a weak hand whatever hand is not grabbing the gun right that hand in general comes up and somewhere on your chest i don't care if you do you know your belly button i don't care if you do high center chest whatever you feel comfortable with we want to get that hand up for two reasons one talked about wasted time right it doesn't make sense to grab your gun and then bring that hand up that's a waste of time you want to move simultaneously so while you're grabbing that gun bring that hand up also when you grab your gun and bring it out that other hand is closer to where it needs to be and for safety it's less likely you're going to shoot your hand obviously that would be bad so while you're establishing that firing grip that other hand is coming up somewhere you pick a spot right over your belly button high center chest somewhere like that for your support hand also in establishing that full firing grip there are different ways to do it but again doing less is going to equal faster i can't stand the i guess i can stand it because i use it for a living but uh, there are a lot of different i i'm required to use the safari land they don't let us have any liberty on what we can what we can run if you don't know i'm professionally security contracting professionally gunfighting making that mercenary money now until the podcast by god's grace will become a full-time income but they require us to use a safari land holster talk about not this principle i like to just grab the gun and go to work but with some holsters like the one i use i have to come up come down push forward push down pull up does that sound efficient no i'd rather have the old school lapd holster where i just grab it and my thumb breaks the top and i pull it out to me that's a way better holster i think people grab the safari lands that kind because they look cool if you want if you need or want a locking holster there are way better designs for a locking holster and what that is for you should really depend on how you draw do you come up and grab the gun from the side and continue to move up do you do you grab the gun in a downward motion and then out whatever that is you should find a locking holster that allows you to do your natural draw and you probably won't know what that is for a while until you actually get a lot of reps in take a professional class do it on the clock shoot a competition with a buzzer whatever but get a holster that aids in that speed uh, just a brief aside if you're carrying concealed i generally don't like a concealed carry holster to have retention other than a passive retention meaning just friction a friction holster meaning i can grab it and go to work if i'm open carrying i like a retention holster because i don't want somebody because somebody's going to know where that gun is if they have eyes if i'm concealed carrying the point is they shouldn't know but if you're going to get a retention holster get one that's fast because if you need a gun you probably need it right now the kind where you have to you know grab push down twist pull up do a cartwheel um hit another button the hood flies off then you pull your gun out you know do you i think uh, those departments the people that that do they maybe they actually don't ever want you to use your gun they don't ever think you're going to use your gun they're like whatever we'll just make it as hard as humanly possible to get that gun out of there so hopefully they change your mind that is a mindset that is not my mindset if you're talking about shooting fast i want that gun now 
so get a retention device that aids in that but again both hands move simultaneously you bring that hand up wherever you want it on somewhere in the middle of your chest so you don't shoot your hand and then as soon as you grab that gun in your full firing grip you're going to orient as quickly as possible that muzzle and sights towards the target you're going to start establishing your firing grip economy of motion there's sometimes you're going to mess it up and you're going to have to adjust but that's not the goal the goal is to start establishing a full firing grip what i like to say is make kind of like a loose karate hand with your fingers together shove that finger you should know where it goes if you've been working on your proper firing grip shove that finger somewhere underneath the trigger guard and as you're pushing out that hand's naturally going to rotate you're going to grab that gun economy of motion once your sights are in a safe acceptable position for the target you're going to start moving back on that trigger and then you're going to again remember your focus your mental focus your eye focus everything on the sights and then that shot should break on that introducing the gun into the equation again economy of motion get that muzzle oriented towards the target and start driving those sights or that optic or whatever up to your eyes an economy of motion you shouldn't like come up with the gun and then move your head all around like a chicken on meth trying to find the gun the sights the optic your head should be where it is and you should bring that gun up to your eyes smooth easy motion also you should not be what some would call fishing with the muzzle of that gun you shouldn't be bringing the gun up and then it's level and then your muzzles up muzzles down muzzles up muzzles down just doing all kinds of crazy wave motion with the gun. Again, economy of motion. Grab the gun. Start establishing your grip as you're coming out to the target. Find those sights. And the less you have to do to get that gun from where it is, and this is the overarching principle, right? The less you have to do to get that gun from where it is to where it needs to be and break that shot, everything else being equal, meaning the speed at which you can move being equal, you... Are going to be faster because you're doing less so the least amount of steps movement effort possible to get that gun from where it needs get that gun from where it is to where it needs to be a pretty easy overarching principle once you get that you can start working on the speed like once you've ironed out a lot of the superfluous movements doing more than's necessary then you can start moving faster and the same thing is going to apply whether you're mounting a shotgun right if you're in like a high ready with a shotgun do as little as possible to get that gun from where it is in its ready position to mount it in the shoulder and your eyes on the sights do as little as possible the same thing applies with an AR-15 on a sling I'm gonna grab a you know same same principle establish that firm firing grip if you're if you can already have your hand on that gun have a full firing grip to start with then you bring that gun up in a the most linear fashion possible the the you know the shortest from where the gun is to where the gun needs to be and start applying those fundamentals same thing with a low ready same thing with a high ready and don't forget about that reverse technique Let's say you're with your AR. You've broken that shot. It's a good shot. You're going to start to come off the target. Gun on safe. Finger off the trigger. And in a very direct route, you're going to bring that rifle back to whatever position. High ready, low ready, a slung position. And then you're going, that's in reverse. And what was the most direct route? Then you're going to repeat that. Now in forward motion from where it is to where it needs to be without a bunch of extra movement you can apply this let's say you're moving from a standing position to a kneeling position you shot a couple of rounds standing you're going to the kneeling does it make sense to point the muzzle at the ground and get into a kneeling position then bring your gun back up on the target or does it make sense to move the gun as little as possible keep the gun down range keep your eyes even on the sights find when we talked about what your eyes are doing find the target once you get in kneeling if you can't keep on it the entire way and introduce the sights and squeeze the trigger keeping that gun up right do as little as possible 
same thing will apply generally in reloading we'll get we might do an entire episode on reloading i don't know but if you're reloading let's say a handgun does it make sense to bring the gun down into your chest and look down at your gun while not looking at the target and then grab your magazine push it into the gun and then shove your gun all the way back on target and bring your head back up to the target doesn't that sound like a lot more work than keeping your head up looking at the target bringing the magazine well where you're looking and throwing a new mag in way less movement way faster and you're more situationally aware so again less movement equals faster times and the human br- let me just talk about this the human brain does not perceive time correctly all the time especially when you get down to fractions of a second a lot of times when i'm getting really crazy fast draw times like in the point sixes like sometimes i might feel like i'm really slow but the timer doesn't lie sometimes i may feel like i'm going super fast and my times are crap you know why because i'm doing way more than i need to and it feels like i'm moving really fast but the actual time is slow so the point of that is you need a timer. Get a, If you're serious about shooting, get a timer. There are apps for your phone that you can get that are free or cost you know dollars instead of hundreds of dollars. If you're serious, get an actual dedicated shot timer. Because if you're trying to save money and use your phone, the first time you drop your phone and run over it because you're running from one target to another, that kind of negates the money you would have saved on a shot timer. The last shot timer I had lasted well over a decade of hard use. I'm on my second one. Any of the main ones are are probably going to work just fine. Whatever floats your boat, they're a pretty simple machine. But again, the big point is you don't really know how fast you are unless you're using a shot timer. You might think, I'm really, really fast. If you never shot on a shot timer, you don't really know. And a lot of that is you might think you're fast because you're moving really fast. But you're not going to know how fast you are until you shoot against a timer. All right, with that, let's roll into the tactical tip of the day. If you have one of those shot timers, you can set what's called a par time. Let's say, uh, what's the standard for a cop? I think it's like a a good draw for a cop is a second and a half. So if you want to start there, set your shot timer for a second and a half and be honest with yourself. In your dry dry fire with an unloaded gun, you set your par time for a set 1.5 seconds. And you set it to random so there's a way to set the shot timer to random so it'll randomly go off so let's say between one second and three seconds when that timer goes off you grab your gun and introduce it into the equation and you want to break that shot in an acceptable place before the second beep goes off that way you know that you've beat your one and a half seconds you don't need a laser you don't need all kinds of crazy fancy you know hundreds of dollar what i think are mostly i've tried them mostly gimmicks if you know how to call your shots like if you know where your front sight is and your rear sights were or your optic was where your dot was when the shot broke that's where the shot went that's where it be right, do you need a laser to tell you that lasers can be helpful if you're shooting from an unconventional position unconventional position which we have yet to talk about really except for like the close contact shot but if you're talking about just learning to draw and, and drawing quickly, why do you need a laser to tell you where your sights were? Shouldn't you know where your sights were when that shot broke? I mean, that's just a, a better, easier way to do it because that translates into real shooting. you getting to call your shots. Like if you drew and you know you missed that shot, you got to make up that shot. Don't wait to hear the report on the steel plate. That's a wasted time. If you know your sights weren't on the target, you didn't hit that target. Start making up that shot before you have to wait for your brain to process the sound of you hitting or missing that target. Light is faster than sound. So why not get used to that when you're practicing and dry firing? Again, set that par time, and then if your sights were an acceptable place on that target, and sometimes you're like, oh, it may have hit, it may have missed, it was iffy. So count that as a miss and do it again. But if you know your sights were in an acceptable place on that target, and you broke that shot before the buzzer went off, then there you go. right? You, you don't always have to spend a ton of money on fancy gizmos and gadgets. If you're serious about shooting, one of the things you probably should spend money on, again, is a shot timer. But until you get there, you can download them on your phone. Your tactical verse of the day. 
You shall not bow down to their gods, nor serve them, nor do according to their works, but you shall utterly overthrow them and completely break down their sacred pillars. You shall serve the Lord your God, and he will bless your bread and your water. Thanks for listening, and have a blessed day.